Hey y'all, I'm sitting here trying to power through my list of videos that I want to do for the month and I'm not even halfway through. I caught myself trying to challenge myself to do 30 videos in 30 days, short form videos, right? Started yesterday. I don't think I'm gonna make the challenge, but <laughs> um, I feel like last year was kind of like a culmination of those feelings. I wanted to do so much last year and I just didn't get an opportunity to do it because you know how you just get in like a funk, right? I was not inspired to do content. I just wasn't inspired. I kind of got in this monotonous habit of just making videos, putting them up, making videos, putting them up. Not how I started my online brand at all like I would get all into my content and be creative and do all the things and vlog and show behind the scenes and document my journey and all that stuff and last year I just wasn't feeling it I honestly think just coming off of what we had been through those two years it was really hard for me it was really really difficult for me because I kind of felt like that was like personally my second stint at being in the house and kind of being not able to live and do the things that I wanted to do and be because y'all know I have little kids right so I don't know about you but during my phase of having little kids it was very much so um not really doing my normal things that I was used to. Let's just say I went through a big transition in my life. Um, you know, those years prior to the Panini thing that we just went through. And going back into that isolation that the you know that had us in was very very different for me um and so now i realized that i'm like dang you know that was really crazy my life changed drastically um when i had my children and you know just as i felt like i was coming out of that moment where i needed to kind of suppress myself and what I really wanted to do not necessarily suppress but you know when you're in the baby toddler phase of motherhood it's more of you're on the back burner and the babies are the priority right as I felt like I was just kind of coming out of that here we go so here we are um 2023 and I'm really feeling good y'all I'm feeling very motivated to just do my thing again which is why I have the list of videos here and I have so many things that I kind of just want to do as far as content I just want to get back out here I want to create from a space of just inspiration and really just get back to a place to where I enjoy creating um, for you all and just enjoy creating for me because that's who I am. Luckily, this situation works out so well for me having an online brand because I've always been that person. I've always been that creative type writing and doing things and making things. And so this is perfect and I couldn't be more grateful to have this opportunity, more grateful for you all that that support my videos and support my channel and support my brand I'm beyond grateful and there are days where I feel like um, I'm not being appreciative enough because I'm not out here creating and doing it how I used to obviously understanding that life changes and we change as people and we go through seasons but I still enjoy doing those things I just honestly think I just wasn't in the mental space to create the way I want but here we are I'm back I feel um, very enthusiastic about the future and the things that I want to do I really want to just get in my creator bag this year you know there are a lot of people out here speaking on business and business and business and do this and, blah, 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 blah. and yeah I want to make money I need to make money and everything but I really just want to create this year I really want to create um, y'all know if you've been here long enough if you haven't welcome to the winning team baby um i'm not a money motivated person at all just at all i'm not a money motivated person i'm gonna always have money god is my source i, I i'm not worried about that i just like to 
feel fulfilled. You know, I just like to make sure that I'm impacting in the way that I'm supposed to be impacting people. Um, yeah, and money is always a, you know, side effect of that. It's, it's always gonna come. So, yeah, that, that's where we are. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling happy. I had put up a post um, late on a Friday, actually. If you didn't see it, I'm so sorry. Uh, you can leave your questions down below in the comments. But I had asked you all if you had any questions for me. Um, I was happy to answer. I wanted to do this Q&A earlier, but, you know, here we are. Um, and so I'm just going to look through your questions and answer the questions that you had. I really liked the questions that you all had. They were... um very much focused on building your brand. So I love that. That's what this is about. That's why we're here. That's why I'm here. And so I'm just going to read through them and we're going to answer these questions. Um, a couple of questions about blogging, which I'm super excited about because I told y'all Wait, are y'all gonna see? Oh yes, y'all saw that video already. I told y'all that I'm getting back in my blogging bag this year. <laughs> okay, I'm getting back in my blogging bag. Like, I'm not playing. I'm getting back in my blogging bag and I'm gonna do what I need to do in order to do that. I have so many things on my list that I'm trying to do, y'all. guess because this, you know, this energy is here. The motivation to create is here. So I have a huge list of the things that I want to do this year. But th the blog, it has to get back on it. So let me pull up these uh, questions really quick we're gonna go through them and yeah let's have a little good time answering questions okay so the very first question <laughs> love it I'm just going in the order they were asked how do you feel about the use of AI and blogging to write articles and will you be implementing this to stay more consistent so AI at the end of the day you, you can't run from it. You got to get with it or get left. That's the bottom line. Artificial intelligence, if you don't know what AI is, but I'm sure you do because you're here. Um, I think it's a good thing, right? I really do think it's a good thing. I think use it for productivity. You can use it for the foundation um, of the research that you're doing for your content. I really do think it has its place. However, right, I truly do think it believes... I truly do believe that it's all in how you use it, right? So there are going to be those who go and try to create blog posts from AI and Google going to flag their content. It won't get shown and you might get your stuff shut down because clearly in their terms of service and conditions, Google speaks about AI content. They don't like it, period. They do not like AI content at all. And then AI content... Like, especially um, websites like ChatGPT, it tells you very specifically that the what it's giving you back, the content that it's giving you, can be inaccurate. It can be based on old facts, old stats. And so I think it's really important to use it in a smart way. Like I said, you can use it to be more productive, right? Now, would I take that AI content and slap it up on a blog post and think I'm going to post that and that's going to be... No, I, I personally would not do that. Would I use it to help me come up with captions? Maybe. Would I use it to help me come up with descriptions on my YouTube um, videos. Yeah. Would I use it to help me come up with email content? Yes. Right? Use it in ways that are not going to affect you getting your blog dinged by Google and saying deeming your site spam and not sending traffic to you. So I think it's all in how you use it. Now, there are going to be tons of people getting out here using it. And I do think that it will have some effect on blogging. However, one thing that AI never gonna do is replicate your actual experience, replicate who you are as a person, uh, replicate a journey that you have been on. So from the beginning, I have been saying it is so important to infuse yourself into your brand, into your blog, because that's something that nobody else on this planet can replicate, even AI, okay? They can't replicate it, yes fact-based content it will be able to spit out facts if that's all you do if you create fact-based content then yeah you might need to figure something else out because AI might just end your blog 
if that's all you're doing. But if you're document documenting journeys that you've taken, if you're documenting your experiences, if you're adding your own sauce into the content, if you're telling the people about who you are, how you got to where you are, are giving them tips and tricks, giving them, you know, special recipes or whatever that you do. AI cannot duplicate that. So people are out here, you know, in a frenzy behind AI, especially since the chat GPT has come out. And I'm not worried because one thing about it, two things for sure, I do a lot of fact-based content, but I also infuse my own personal journey into it. And that's something that it can't duplicate. You know, there are a thousand ways to skin a cat. I tell people that all the time. But the way I do things and how I have built my business, it's unique to me. It's unique to me. There, people say that, oh, you got to know search engine optimization in order to build this big, massive blog if you want to make all this money. No, well, I made a whole lot of money without doing any of that. Right, I didn't know anything about search engine optimization. There are several lanes that you can take when it comes to blogging and building your online brand. And I happen to take an alternative route. So I totally think that AI has its place. I think we definitely should be using it to be more productive on my blog, on our blogs. And yes, I'm totally going to be use it, using it to stay consistent on my blog. I will use it, like I said, for foundation things like coming up with head, uh, maybe titles for my blog posts, for coming up with outlines for a blog post. But the content that I create on my site will not be AI generated because Google has specifically said that they do not like AI generated content and they will mark you as spam. So that's where I'm at with it. I'll be using it for other things, captions, everything like that, helping me out, even though I, I like to put my flair in and I understand the importance of, you know, adding your own sauce and, you know, being your own person in your content. So I'll still do that, but I will use it for help, like a personal, not a personal assistant, but like a, an, a business assistant, like an assistant, right? You know, to help me be more productive. So the answer to that is like AI will be using it. Okay, what was the next question? Okay, the next question is, what are the best apps to use in terms of promoting a blog, especially for someone that doesn't really use social media that much, but still wants to build an audience online? I really like this question. I really, really, really like this question because this is kind of where I'm at in my life right now. I have an actual life going on. Y'all know I have four babies. As they grow, as they increase the things that they're doing in school and all that, my life becomes even more busier, okay? More busy. All my kids got stuff going on. And so I lost that ambition, I guess, last year to really be scrolling on social media because I really didn't have time. And Instagram just really pissed me off with how they um, manage stuff over there. But that's a whole nother story for another day. But the way I run my business right now is pretty organically is very much so off of passive marketing. You know, I am not active on very many social media platforms right now at all. Honestly, I'm not active on any social media platform right now because YouTube is not considered a social media platform. This is a search engine over here, right? So... My question to how you would build your blog without being on social media, the first thing is I highly recommend that you learn search engine optimization, SEO. This is how Google takes blog posts and ranks them on Google. You want to be figuring out what do I need to do to optimize this blog post in a way that's going to make it rank and make Google really like this blog post so that they can put it on the site when someone's searching for this term. And that simply looks like you making sure that your first paragraph in that blog post is really, really optimized with keywords, using your keywords throughout that blog post, having good headings, good photos um, in your blog post, making sure it's thoroughly 
optimize to make sure that you're increasing your chances of ranking on Google. So that's the first thing. Secondly, as you're building up your page views and your traffic through that search engine optimization, the next thing you want to do is to build an email list. Now, as people come to your blog, they'll read your um, blog post. And an easy way to get people to jump on your email list is to give them something for free. So say, for instance, they came to your uh, your blog and you talk a lot about recipes and cooking and all that good stuff. You could offer them a free mini cookbook, right, on each of those popular pages as they come. Download my favorite recipes for weeknight family meals or whatever it is and you put together a few pictures a few recipes and a PDF throw it together and send it off to them for free this is how you will build people up on your email list and so what this email list is going to do is allow you to basically stay in contact with your readers the people that you know like your stuff you will send them out a newsletter once a week once a month whatever you choose and this will give you the ability to get them back to your blog more often so as you send out a newsletter, you can say, oh, these are the new posts from last week and they will click over to your blog. And as you just continue to send that out, not only are you getting them back to your blog on a regular basis, you're building a deeper connection with them so that when you're ready to uh, sell things to them, they trust you, they know you, and they're, they're ready to make a purchase. And not that it's necessarily all about making purchases it's just you're building a deeper connection with the people that you're online wanting to connect with so an email list is the second way that you can build this blog without being on social media and then the last one is pinterest i know it, i know what you're saying but pinterest is not a social media platform pinterest is just like youtube it's a search engine People literally go to Pinterest in order to click out to blogs. It literally is the one place that is made for bloggers. So I would definitely recommend that you get on Pinterest. It is not a needy platform. You make your pins every single month. You schedule your pins um, inside of Tailwind and you're done. You literally could do that in a couple of hours a month, two, three hours a month, sit down, make your pins, schedule them out and be done with it and never have to do anything else because you schedule the entire month. You can schedule three months at a time, whatever you want to do. Um, but totally, totally, totally Pinterest. Make sure your pins are optimized as well. They look good. You know, they're click worthy and yeah, Pinterest. And then the last one, we here, YouTube, <laughs> we here. And even though you said you don't like social media, I would still consider a YouTube channel because y'all know Google, YouTube, Google and blogging. I, girl, I can't even get my thought out. <laughs> Google and come on now, Nikisha, what were you trying to say? Oh, YouTube and Google, Bonnie and Clyde of the internet. I love the combination. I really don't think there's a more powerful combination, especially if you're like me, you're trying to do passive marketing, which I'm sure you are because that's why you're here. That's my vibe. You know, I'm not trying to scroll TikTok all day. I I'm not going to do it. Um, Yeah, powerful combination. Even if you don't want to get on camera like this, there are several ways to make videos without showing your face, without sharing your voice, you know, but very, very easy to do that. You can create power point presentation style videos, stock image and stock video style videos. Basically, you just want a video that's going to um, enhance that blog post that you wrote and make it better and make it, you know, have a little bit more SEO juice behind it so that you can, you know, embed it in the blog post, give that person, the reader, more value when they're coming to read that post. They see a YouTube video in there as well. So if that going back to the cooking example if you have a blog post and it's about how to cook something and you're just walking them through the recipes and you got the pictures there it would be great to embed a video of you actually doing it right so that's how that works you never got to show your face you don't even have to share your voice if you don't want to showing your hands you're doing the little video all this good stuff you got music playing in the background softly boom, there you go. So totally think those are four ways that you could build a blog without being on social media at all, not a requirement. There you go. Okay. So the next question is, do you have a full, 
did you have a full vision when you started your business and YouTube channel or did you just start and things unfolded as you went or both when did you know it was time to start so no I did not have a vision at all for my business. A, a little bit about me, if you're new here. About five years ago, I left my corporate job after having a very bad experience at a daycare center. And it literally shook me so bad. I was just like, okay, yeah, no, I can't do this. And I just decided I could not keep my kids in a daycare. So I walked in my corporate job and was like, I'm out. Lived off savings and investments for about a year um, before I went and got a job at a child care facility. Uh, the owner was an African American woman who was absolutely amazing um, to me and she that was literally a pivotal point in my life that I truly believe gave me the confidence to get here. Um, but yeah, I went to work at a child care center for about two two years two years maybe pushing three years i did that because you can't keep running through your savings girl without putting anything back <laughs> okay and i wanted my kids to have social interactions with kids and be able to get out and them to continue to grow and continue to develop and bring in something okay and bring in something and so i was like you know what i need to do something one day i was driving down the street and I saw this daycare center. I just moved to the area and I saw this daycare center. I don't even know why. Y'all, I come from a financial background. I was like, okay, let's go in here in this daycare. Went in the daycare. She was there. We literally just start having a conversation. I don't know if I went in to see about signing my kids up or a job. I don't I don't know, y'all. God just led me there. We start talking, hit it off. It was so great. She was amazing. Like black owned female with multiple business. Like it was just everything. She was just motivating and inspiring. And it was a great conversation. And it was it was just great. And next thing I know, I was working there that i was working there she let my kids come for free and i worked there um for much less than i was used to making but having my kids be there like that and be able to get what they got was a benefit for me so you know we we always got to weigh pros and cons you know cost analysis like okay what would i be paying per child if i was paying for daycare i already know i was paying a mortgage for them before so i already know what that's worth and then okay she's only paying me there. anyway i went to work at a daycare center um and when i as i after i was there for about a year, I actually started my blog. Now, most of you know when I first started my blog, I did not have a clue what I was doing, okay? I didn't know what I was doing. I think the first year I might have published 10 posts just talking about my day, girl, didn't know what I was doing. Just talking, just venting on there. And then eventually, um, I left the daycare to go full time, right? I, I, I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. I just knew that I was unfulfilled at the daycare. I was supposed to be doing more. It's like, okay, this cute, this was cute for the two, three years you did it. Yes, your, your kids got what they needed. Now, <laughs> what's going on? God was nudging me at this point. It was like I started to feel unfulfilled. And so I started, um, I, I jumped out on faith. Mind you, I'd had the blog already. I was doing that on the side. And I was like, you know what? I'm done with this. You know, you can watch the video about exactly how it went. I'll link it up here somewhere. Exam this is just a paraphrase. Um, and then I just left my corporate job. Like, I mean, I just left the daycare. I left. And I was like, okay, you know, look, what I, what she paying me? Psh I can make this up doing anything. So I went out. I actually tried Uber for a day. That didn't work. Um, and then I started doing shipped. And that was the... Uh, that was the creation of this channel. I started doing ship shopping back before everybody knew about this grocery delivery. And I started documenting my journey as wanting to replace that income. I literally started this channel on documenting my journey. Uh, I, so I started doing ship, started documenting, started doing this YouTube channel, all that. I was like, I could hustle my way to what she was paying me. And that's exactly what I did. I hustled my way to this point right because as i start doing the videos about 
being out here hustling, getting it on my own, being home full time with my kids, getting out of the box that people like to put single moms in. Look, I hustled my way to six figures, okay? So, the YouTube channel popped off because of those ship videos. Once the YouTube channel exceeded what I was doing out there on ship, I was like, yeah, I'm about to go all in. I had proof of concept. I knew I could do it at that point. And so, that's pretty much how my business started. I had the blog already. Um, kind of simultaneously as I was in that time hustling on ships and everything, I was doing brand deals, tons of brand deals, really popping on in, um, Instagram, which I really didn't have a lot of followers, but people loved my story. My story that I was sharing about me being a single mom out here trying to get it, living outside of this box that them people like. Uh, and, and, and brands loved that. And so I did a lot of brand deals and I basically just went with the flow, you know, keeping God and like, okay, Lord, what does we do it? Okay. When did I know it was time to start? I, I basically got unfulfilled at my job. And I feel like at any point in time where you are at a job... Oh, that just made me think of something. You, somebody, one of you DM'd me the other day on Instagram and I'm, I saw your DM and I am going to respond back to you. I was in the midst of doing something. Ooh. I feel you, sis. Tangent, but I feel you. If you're in a moment like this, like someone that DM'd me, and you're just feeling like this is sucking my soul. You know, like it's draining. Just like you just feel like every day you go to work you're dreading it and you're just I don't like that feeling I'm not living my life like that and I just really talk to God like this is not it this is not life more abundantly you know and it didn't feel like and I don't like that feeling and so I did not want to feel like that you know I have children to be healthy and sane and happy for. And I don't care if I'm making $10 an hour. If I am happy, to me, that is much more important than having all the money and being miserable. That's not how I am set up. And so I got to that place to where I was unfulfilled. And it's not that that was soul sucking because my job, the daycare was not soul sucking. The babies were actually amazing. But I started to feel unfulfilled. Like I was supposed to be doing more. And I knew that I was supposed to be doing more. There was not even a question. It was just, okay, I'm supposed to be doing more. And so that's how I knew it was time for me to just jump out and start. Did I know I would be where I am today? Or was I intentionally trying to build this? No, I was not. I just stepped out on my gut feeling. I stepped out on, you know, how I felt. You know, it was a vibe. You know how y'all say it. it was a vibe. It was a vibe. I just stepped out on that unction that God was giving me I knew it was time and I knew I was supposed to be doing something greater I've always known that you know I never thought it would be this but I've always known that I was gonna do great things and so it was a feeling and I just jumped out on faith and started to be honest okay what do we got next do you know what do you think okay the next question I'll answer when do you think is the best time to monetize your audience? You can monetize just by making content these days. So much, much different. I think you should monetize from day one, basically by simply creating your content. Get on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Amazon, all the platforms, honey, with your content. And you simply are monetizing when you do that. Additionally, affiliate marketing you're simply sharing the things that you like and love. So if you're authentically talking about fashion and you're like, yes, girl, I got this dress for, from H&M, I'll link it down below, that's monetizing, right? But you're still being authentic and sharing and talking with your audience and building that same community. So um, to keep it funky, you monetize from day one. Okay, it's time. We don't have time in 2023 to be waiting a certain amount of time. No, you monetize from day one in my opinion. But that's Nikisha. Oh, oh, this, this is what I missed. This is the part of a, the last question that I missed. She says, how do you think God has played a role in your journey? This journey is a God journey. You know when you're younger and you have your life plans 
And then, you know, life happens and God laughs at our plans and <laughs> and then these things unfold in a way that you never would have imagined. But you know how things happen to you and you're so discouraged in those moments of things happening and you're just like, I can't see my way out of it, right? And then God shows up to prove you that he still lives that he still has the last and final say when it comes to your life that he still will take your mess and turn it into a message because indeed he has done that for me i totally think that everything that i've gone through in the in the journey and the path that god has set out before me i wouldn't be able to do this without god because even still to this day i doubt myself so much i get you know, in spaces where I'm like, oh, you know, and, and, and it's God himself that continues to have to just reassure me and let me know that no, baby, I wouldn't have put you here if I didn't think you could sustain it or if I didn't think you were worthy of the journey or if I didn't think that, you know, you could really go out and um, touch my people in a way that they needed in this day and in this time. So... It has been amazing. <laughs> God is so good, to be honest with you. Just so, 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 so good. And I think that it's really important to listen, you know, when he's leading. It's really important to listen when he's leading, even when it feels so scary. Even when you're not sure of what the end will be or what the outcome is going to be. You just got to trust and go. Trust and go. Just tr trust and leap. You know the saying, they say, hey, you, you, you jump and then you grow wings on the way down i ain't gotta grow no wings because i already know there's a god that gonna catch me every time okay if i do it and i feel like ooh, i'm feeling like god is telling me to do this you know what i'm saying or um god shows me this and or god showed me that or whatever i already know if i make the move and it ain't right that he gonna come back through and correct it you know or if I make the move and he told me to that baby this thing about to be <laughs> this about to be big it's gonna be everything right so huh, it's been an amazing journey God is great uh, my journey is all because of God I never imagined that um, I would be in this space and a single mother of four that people would assume is supposed to be in a lowly place for whatever reason they think that you ain't never got to succumb to what people think you're supposed to be doing thinking you're supposed to be oh, no because people will cap your potential honey and you never have to do that people thought I was insane when I said I was going to go and leave my job and I was going to go home and do my own thing right because my babies were more important than anybody's job jobs a dime a dozen out here a dime a dozen but my babies were only going to be little once and to me it was important for me to be there and to be present especially had it had been only Having been the only parent in the household, that was important to me to be there for their their time, that time, right? It was important to me. So people thought I was crazy. Okay, they thought I was insane. But God uses the foolish things to confine the wise. So I, I was like, okay, think I'm crazy. I can be crazy. Cool. Cool, right? And here I am. Here I am having looked back. Haven't had a job in five years. So, girl, God is everything. He will get you where you want to be, okay? Okay, the next question. She said, what is UGC content? What's the difference between UGC content and a regular content creator? Um, because she's been seeing the term UGC all over the place. UGC is just user-generated content. This is just... A person, a regular, regular person buying something and creating a piece of content authentically um, about that piece of content. So think unboxing, you're unboxing something you bought or you bought something and you like it so much till you create a video about it. You know, it's a, a authentic experience is what it's supposed to look like. Let's say that. And now people are doing that type of content, regular everyday Joe Schmo people who 
don't even necessarily consider themselves um, content creators, which is kind of why this term came around because now regular, regular people are doing it. Um, and they can get paid for that content. But here's the thing. Here's the slick behind all of this. Brand's been using UGC content forever in a day. That's all a review is on a website. On Amazon, you buy something, you review that product, you're given that um, brand, you user-generated content, and they're using your review or your testimonial, whatever you're doing in order to get additional sales. But the slick behind it is that brands are getting people to create this user-generated content as an excuse to not pay people. <laughs> That's how I feel. A brand could say, oh, hey, we'll pay you $50 to, you know, review this item. Very similar to what I did when I kind of first started off as a blogger with some of these networks, but I was brand new. I didn't know what I was doing, didn't have very many followers, and that's pretty much how UGC creators are now. But yeah, it's a way for brands to get authentic reviews and recommendations, you know, authentic content from people. You know, and sometimes it will pay a little here or there, but being a regular content creator, it's really no difference in it. It's just that when you do a brand campaign, typically you're going to get way more than $100 to review something or to talk about something on your platform. The bigger your platform, the better you'll get paid. UGC right now, I see a lot of very small um, creators doing it or people that didn't even consider themselves creators in the first place. So a brand offering them $50 to make a video about something, they like, yeah, sure, sign me up. Yeah, that that's all the questions I have for today. I'm sorry if this was long-winded. <clears throat> I'm a long-winded person. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to chat and answer some questions if I could. And yeah, if you didn't get to ask your question like I said you can drop it down in the comments below I'll be happy to answer it for you but I just want to say I appreciate all of you that watch my videos I appreciate you um, for supporting me for clicking on the like button for clicking on the subscribe button and for commenting I appreciate you just for simply watching my content I don't take it lightly I am um, honored honestly um, that you would take time out your day to watch me so, um, with that being said, I'll see y'all in the next video.